This is Between the Brackets, a MediaWiki podcast, episode 68, September 1st, 2020. Welcome to Between the Brackets, I'm your own Karen. And my guest for this episode is Nikki Nikui, who is a software engineer in the platform team at the Wikimedia Foundation, where she has been working since 2019. So Nikki, welcome to the program. Thank you, thanks for having me. Uh, where do you live? <clears throat> um, I'm based in Seattle, Washington. Yeah. Um, so you've only been at the Wikimedia Foundation for about a year. Uh, uh, what, what kind of things were you doing before then? Um, so my first job out of college, I've graduated, what, like 2015, maybe? Um, I spent a couple years working at Nordstrom Technology. Nordstrom is a, like a U.S.-based retail company. Um, so there I did a lot of, I did web development for, um, an application that all the photo studios used. So basically all the pictures you saw online, we basically built a tool for, uh, asset, uh, processing. So that was, I was there a couple of years and I learned a lot. Your first job out of college was like pretty eye opening. It's you're like, wow, this is very different than what I learned in college. Um, But it was a great, it was a great place. Yeah. Well, you studied, did you study computer science? I studied informatics, um, which is technically under a different, it's a different college entirely. Um, I was at the University of Washington, but basically informatics is the study of information. So under informatics, you have like library sciences, you have basically Uh, information is stored and displayed and presented across different platforms. Yeah. Um, So what is, was there programming involved in that? Or is it more general kind of data science, not, not data science, but information related stuff? It's, it's really like a catch all, honestly. So you can do whatever you more interested in right so you can take more there's a base number of programming classes you have to take like a certain number of like requirements um beyond that you kind of choose your path so if you are more into the like design you can start taking some more ux ui classes if you're more in the programming you can take some more programming classes um we have a data science uh route that didn't come about until after i graduated unfortunately but um yeah i had a base it wasn't it wasn't in the trenches as much as computer science was. And so it gave me a broad understanding of all the parts of kind of technology. Yeah. It's not clear to me actually what is a, what is valuable to learn in a, in a, any kind of programming oriented college d- degree, as opposed to the kind of stuff that you should just pick up uh, on the job. I don't know. I, I agree. It, um, it's kind of hard because you'll, you'll take these computer science classes and then you'll be like, when am I ever going to need to learn this and do this at work? But I don't, I think that stuff is still valuable. It teaches you how to problem solve and troubleshoot. Um, so it's not necessarily like the, I mean, it's yes, you need a foundation of computer science principles and um, whatever, but I think more so it teaches you how to persist through and problem solve. There is that definitely. Uh, yeah, I've, I've still never had to, uh, bubble sort anything <laughs> so, during my entire programming career, but, <clears throat> yeah, um, it, 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 there's something else that's interesting, um, about your work career. You've also done quite a bit of, uh, athletic stuff from what I understand. Uh, yeah, on the side, I, I teach fitness classes. Um, so that's just like my little side gig hustle that brings me like, happiness <laughs> yeah uh, what what do you teach um i taught like cardio classes all throughout college um at our schools like rec center and then once i graduated i got a job at a private gym in seattle so i would teach morning strength and conditioning classes so basically think of like a boot camp class or kind of any kind of strength and conditioning class yeah, that's really that's really interesting. That's really cool. Um, yeah, there've been um, as far as outside interests, there've been quite a few uh, musicians on this program. I mean, program that seems to be the main, the one main um, side hobby that people have. Uh, but uh, but 
I, I mean, I assume there have been other people who do fitness who have been on this, this show. It, it just hasn't come up. But um, I think it's, that's very important, uh, doing physical fitness. Um, are you still, is it is it still happening now with the lockdown, by the way? Not really. I So I, I taught my own, I had my own class a couple days a week for a few years. And then, th- I mean, there were some incidents where, like, we had on-calls. Um, at Nordstrom. And so there was a couple of times where I just got paged and I was in the middle of teaching class and it, it got to oh, be, it got to be too much. Like you have pager duty going off and you're like trying to like tell people to like do push ups. And it, it was a couple instances. I was like, you know what, maybe this isn't the best thing for me right now. So I, I ended my own class and then I started just substituting classes. Um, but since then I haven't had to, everything's virtual now. So the gym I'm, I was part of like does online classes. They don't, um, I haven't subbed in a very long time. Um, but it's moved all virtual. So. Oh, okay. Oh, that works. Um, yeah. Do you, I mean, um, do you, do you feel like there are, there are benefits to, um, exercise besides just, uh, besides just health benefits in, in, in terms of, uh, increased productivity or that sort of thing? Um, yeah, there's actually been v- numerous incidents where I've been really frustrated at work or I feel overwhelmed or I feel stressed and I just, I just go outside and I go on a run and, or I do my own workout or something. And I come back a, in a better mood and be more positive about the outcome of the problem I'm trying to solve. Um, it, it's the one thing that I know will get me back to a healthier mental state, um, just for my own personal life, as well as for like my work. I think it, I think it goes both ways. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I've, 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 I run uh, to, uh, not, I'm not fast by any sense, but uh, it definitely um, helps avoid that. There, there can be kind of an, a negative feedback loop where you get stuck and you, and, you know, you get frustrated and then and it prevents you from doing more work. And then so it, you know, it just keeps getting worse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what, so, so what you go running mostly? I run, when you, you I, know, when... I invested in my own dumbbell set because when lockdown started, I was like, oh, this isn't going to last very long. And then after a couple of weeks, I was like, okay, maybe I need to buy my own dumbbells. So, um, yeah, I mean, I do a, a combination of both, um, running and like strength training, but it, um, it just depends. Honestly, getting up and just moving around, getting up off your, um, off your chair can do wonders yeah like i know every, yeah. every developer that's going to listen to this has had like a million situations where they've been stuck and then they just like get up and leave for a second like 20 minutes 30 minutes go on a walk come back and then they sit back down again and you're like oh that was dumb why didn't i think about that over the three hours where i was <laughs> i was stuck um yeah 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 i've definitely had that um i, I don't know if yeah yeah uh this isn't religious exercise, but I don't know if you've heard of the concept of, uh, what is it? Teddy bear debugging. So, or, or rubber duck debugging yeah, it has ducking, a few different yeah. names, but yeah, that's, that's helped me a few times. It's always embarrassing, but it does, uh, help where you just have, you just say out loud the, the thing. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, uh, um, <clears throat> wait, so I want, I'm, I'm curious, I, I guess cause I've, I've, cause because, uh, exercise has never come up. Uh, on this show before I have like all these things I want to say have you have you have you raced have you you know competed um I've done like some half marathons and like a trail half marathon um over the last couple years I'm not a huge runner honestly like I I do like running but it's not my main thing um yeah okay yeah uh cool so so yeah you you now work at the Wikimedia Foundation how did you end up there um I I was at Nordstrom and I was like, and I, I love, I loved my team and my coworkers and it was an awesome place to work. I think I wanted to transition to a, an organization that did something more like socially impactful. Um, I, I actually did this thing when I graduated college. I, there's like a service. It's like a, it's like a website basically. It's called futureme.org or com or something. And you basically write yourself a letter and then you can say when you want it to be sent back to your email. So you can say, send this back to me in six months, two years, four years, whatever. And I wrote myself a letter when I graduated college because I was really, really interested in solving, like at that time, my main focus was solving 
homelessness with technology. That was like my capstone. That was like my thing. And huh. I wrote a letter to myself and I was like, Nikki, if you get, it was like, I think I sent it, had it set three years from the time that I wrote it. I said, you know, you're probably working a corporate job right now. I don't want you to forget that your, your dream or your ideal um, outcome of being in technology is to do something socially impactful. I don't want you to forget it. I don't want you to go down like a, a corporate rabbit hole or whatever. So I got the letter like three years after I had written it. I was like, oh yeah, I actually kind of forgot I wanted to do this. So wow. from then on, I was like, you know, this is like the reminder that I needed. So I started kind of looking for positions outside, um, outside Nordstrom. And then I came across the foundation and it seemed like an awesome opportunity. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's an amazing story. So you literally, you you only had like a, a vague recollection that you had written this thing. Well, I think, yeah, because people, I, I knew that I would forget. Like I knew I'd seen people graduate college and then they have an idea of what they wanted to do. They wanted to save the world. They wanted to, you know, whatever. And, and then they get a job and then you kind of get in the, the routine and the habit and then you forget what was important to you because your priorities change. And I, I wanted to remind myself that that was a value of mine that I, I wanted to make sure I maintained. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. So anyone, if you uh, ever want a reminder, future me, like, just go write yourself a letter. It's, um, it's, uh, it's great. <laughs> yeah. I've heard of this thing. I never, I never thought to write one for myself, but yeah, it, it, well, um, there's clearly a benefit there. Um, so yeah, so you started working at the Wikimedia Foundation. I mean, how did that feel to, uh, all of a sudden be, you know, working for humanity as opposed to just, you know, shoppers? I mean, it was, it was a, a shift. Um, like the, I mean, the product I was working on is very different, like media wiki versus my, it was different technology. It was a different stack. Um, I mean, I will say even even though it was retail, like the, the bo people at both organizations are are amazing. And so I've been really lucky with awesome coworkers. Um, but it was, I mean, it was definitely a shift. I went from using like being a full stack, basically full stack developer for web development for like a web app um, to mostly writing PHP backend code for MediaWiki. Um, and I had done some PHP at my old, at my old um, position, but... Um, it wasn't what I mostly did. Like, you know, I had spent like maybe a year writing our backend code in PHP and then we, we kind of moved to using Node.js instead. Um, so getting familiarizing myself again with PHP was, a um, was also a shift, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's my first time changing company. So you get, you get your first job and you're like, Oh, I'm sure this is how everyone does everything. And then you get a new job. You're like, Whoa, nope, that was, that's not, that's not like there's no standard way. So. Right, right. Um, th th this was also your first uh, experience working on open source software, I assume. Yes, it was. Um, yeah, so so I'm actually interested in that the the the, the differences in the uh, the the development environment, the work environment, or whatever it is, whatever it was that you, that that you know st stuck out at you as being as being uh, different. Um, I mean, are, are there specific things you can think of that, that um, there's, there's one surprised thing. you? Yeah, like I think at Nordstrom, we owned the whole application from beginning to end. It was truly like in our team owned the whole stack. So from like basically owning the infrastructure, provisioning our servers, um, writing the front end, the back end, all the, all the, like the database configuration, everything like that all the monitoring, all the logging, everything we handled. And so I was used to that. And so when I came to the foundation and it was more of a, um, it was each team was responsible for one slice of it. And although there is cross collaboration, it's not like I'm going to be provisioning the servers that I'm going to like deploy new media wiki instances to. Right. So um, that, yeah. that was a difference, um, but I get it. Our, my team was really small at Nordstrom. So we were able to do that and we were all, you know, physically sitting around each other whereas here you're you know your distributed teams around the world and it's such a large i mean like media wiki itself and then all the production wikis that the foundation hosts like it it's so much of a larger scale 
um, project and initiative. So, I mean, I, I get the difference in how it's structured, but it was a shift for me to not, to not have to own that or um, see the whole process through, I suppose. Yeah. Now that's interesting. You were, you were not just a programmer, you were also doing general IT slash networking stuff. Yeah, it was just kind of like at, uh, oh, Nordstrom. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's broken. Okay, like, what's up? Like, let's just like log in the server and like see what happened. Like, look at the log. Like, tell the log. And then, right. And then, oh crap. Okay, it's broken. Um, nobody, all the photo studios can work right now. Okay, push out a hotfix. Deploy it yourself. Um, it was a slightly more scrappy <laughs> that way um, because yeah. our consumer base was it was all internal and it was a lot much obviously much smaller. I think we had like maybe like a cup to a thousand users 2000 users maybe um oh wait I, I don't understand it wasn't just it wasn't the entire website for nordstrom no it was an application so we have nordstrom owns their own photo studios um and there's multiple around so basically from the process of like a imagine like a t-shirt comes from calvin klein and is sent to nordstrom um as a sample to the end result where the picture of that t-shirt worn by the model is photoshopped with all the attached metadata and everything like that is live on the site. That whole um, process of image processing and um, basically asset management, we built an app to handle that. So it was all internal. Our users were Photo Studio, um, also Nordstrom corporate employees. I get it, okay, okay. So it didn't have to be, you know, had, didn't have to have 99.999% whatever it is uptime that kind of thing I mean we, tr we, I mean, we treat it ideally but ideally uh, yeah right. we treated it as such because it's a lot you lose a lot of money if all your photo studios can't work which I mean really rarely happened um but it was it was a smaller team with a yeah smaller customer base for sure yeah okay oh that's cool um what about the um the 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 testing environment that's something i've been looking into a lot lately is adding tests uh were you doing that before or are you doing that now um te like just like writing integration unit tests and yeah and yeah okay. exactly exactly yeah yeah right. um i will say that the testing um i mean i i had written tests at nordstrom i i, I mean i write tests at uh, the foundation um recently we've had a push to you know really flush out more of our um our testing suite so i mean realizing how important it is um so yeah we have a set of like unit tests for those are uh, like for example i've been working on the like our rest our some rest api endpoints and so we make sure that each endpoint is backed by at least integration tests and uh end-to-end -end tests as well as some unit tests as well so we're really putting a focus on testing um it's it's hard like you don't want to inherently just do that. Like it's not exactly like the most like exciting thing in the world, but um, I think yeah. it'll save your butt in the long run. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just one of those things that you you need to get into the habit of it. I still haven't gotten into it, but it it's definitely important to um, to do that. And some people say you you shouldn't debug. There's some famous quote like if instead of debugging, just add a new test or something like that. Or yeah. Keep adding tests until you until you've isolated the problem or something. Um, was there anything, was, was there anything that, that, that seemed like a step down where, where you were surprised that the, 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 the development environment or uh, the software in general uh, was, I don't know, not as sophisticated as what you had at, uh, at Nordstrom? I mean, I wouldn't say like, I mean, I think, I think it's the nature of open source, right? You have this thing that's been around for so long and you've had so many different contributors from all over and it's only bound that people are going to be doing things different ways. So I think, I think that's the, that's the, I mean, that's the problem with any major piece of software, right? Nordstrom, I, right. I didn't know what something did. So I would just like literally walk over to my coworker's desk, like, Hey, like, did you write this like a month ago? Like, like, what is this? Um, whereas here right, right. I, I don't have the luxury of doing that. And so, um, it's been really interesting, like all the like documentation comments, like code readability, these are all things that I have really come to appreciate when looking at media wiki code, because, um, it's, it's what makes or breaks my comprehension of it. Um, and if I can speed that up, cause there's, there is so much code in there, like it is huge and 
when I pick up a new task, I have to familiarize myself with the current ecosystem of what I'm working on. Um, and if it's written or documented and commented in a way that's understandable, it makes, it makes things so much easier. Yeah. Um, so what, what kind of things have you been, have you worked on? You mentioned the API. Um, yeah, so um, we're developing a, like a, a REST API for MediaWiki. Um, for now, just kind of handling the, some of the major cases. So like editing a page, searching, all that stuff. Um, and then along with that, a suite of end-to-end -end tests and then as well as integration tests. Um, and then additionally, I worked on a project to kind of modernize like the, hit, the hooks, um, the hook system within MediaWiki. Um, let's see what else. And yeah. then a bunch of other various kind of tasks that have popped up in between that. Um, I will say it took, it took me a while to get familiar with MediaWiki. There's, a, there's like a lot. So I think the, the, uh, what's, what's the word? Um, the ramp up time, I guess, uh, that, that was, that was a couple months right. for sure. I was like, what, like, wh what are we dealing with here? Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I, and even learning to use the software, like as an end user, um, there's both things. Oh, okay. So, yeah, what do you think about? I, 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 it might be sort of outside of your domain, but what what do you think about MediaWiki as software in terms of the the user experience? I mean, I think it. So I actually had a. I was talking to my friend, and um, he he's also a developer, and. Um, I was telling him, oh, so, oh, I got this new job at like the foundation and whatever. And he like had, you know, he had definitely been familiar with MediaWiki and, and we were just talking about like, just especially like the, the front end of it. And he's like, and I was like, yeah, you know, it's not exactly like the most modern front end, like, we, you know, and, right. and he's like, you know what? No, I think it's perfect. And I was like, why? And he's like, well, it does what it's supposed to. Like at the end of the day, like it accomplishes the task. Yes. It's, there is a lot there. It's a really it's an older code base. So maybe there's a, there's a lot of, you know, technical debt there. Like every project has um, that you need to eliminate to get it to a, a clean state. But at the end of the day, it, it does a lot. And it's, I, I've just for my short time, well, about a year here, um, I've just seen so many great implementations using MediaWiki. Um, but that's not to say obviously it doesn't have room for improvement. Like everything does. There's always technical debt, like, that it's just it's just the nature of having multiple people work on something um it's like for example you want to add yeah. a feature but there's already like a class that does what you want to do but you don't know about it yet right because you haven't used it or it's hidden under all the other like other classes that you know it's it's that familiarity with the ecosystem i think that that helps um helps make sure that we don't make more technical debt as we write new code yeah, um, uh, well, I think your your friend your well your friend is is looking at it in a positive light, uh, which is good. But, uh, yeah, just briefly, are, are you are you? I, I come I come from the the so called enterprise media wiki world. I don't, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that at all. Uh, I mean, you talked about different media wiki implementations, so presumably you meant outside of the Wikimedia sites. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, there's a whole suite of extensions. Obviously, there's you know hundreds of extensions uh, beyond the ones used on Wikimedia sites. I don't know if you <clears throat> know anything about that. I'm I'm always curious to hear how much people at at the Wikimedia Foundation know about this this other world um, of enterprise uh, enterprise yeah. media wikis. Yeah, I mean, yeah, myself, like I I don't know uh, that much comparatively, um, just because I'm I'm not I haven't been around and like not like a seasoned a seasoned media wiki vet <laughs> but i have plenty of well, like coworkers that like um i think there's like there's i i have seen a lot because when doing the hooks work like i got to um just kind of see what other um like extensions for example were developed and like if those extensions were being used by like enterprise media wiki uh, implementations and so to see to see how other outside developers have been using the core software features and like building on that um and it's actually been interesting whenever you make a feature understanding who's using it and like what implication implications does it have 
for changing it. So like with the hooks work, like understanding how extensions and outside developers have been using the hook system so far. So we change it, we're kind of aware of how it's being used and making sure that there's not crazy uh, breaking changes like that. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I know of a, a, f a few big uh, media wiki implementations like, um, like fandom was one of them, right? That's a big one. Sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, the biggest. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, not too familiar, but I know a few. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting that you mentioned, uh, you know, breaking changes and uh, dealing with technical debt and all that. It seems, I don't know, I, I should, there should be some way to quantify it, but it seems like in the last, uh, while, maybe a year or something, six months or something, there's, there's been a ton of, uh, changes, <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 well, the, there's obviously the, this whole Parsoid thing that's that's going to move into core MediaWiki. There's the hooks thing that you mentioned, the re rewriting hooks. Uh, there's uh, some other stuff. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like there's constantly there's just a lot of of, of new things. Uh, potentially enough that that it might justify a finally changing to the version number to 2.0 but that's that's a whole other discussion but um yeah i don't know i, I does it I, you well you, you, i guess it's been there the, it's been that way essentially the, the the whole time you've been there but does does it feel like there's more of a push now from from some direction to um uh you know to to rewrite more of the software and modify more things and you know uh, deal with all the the technical debt that exists. Yeah, I mean, I think I think dealing with technical debt comes with a like a a price, I suppose. Right, you have to you have to gut old software, like you have to gut old code that, um, and do it in a way that doesn't harm the people that are that are like you know long time developers or long time contributors. Um, and that's something that I've I have I well, I have no familiarity with because I haven't worked on a re released, like a releasable piece of software before. At Nordstrom, I was right. like, this doesn't work. Like, cool, like just get rid of it. Like version. Yeah, like, yeah, no one else was using, right. Yeah, right. and it's such, an, it's such an interesting shift because in the beginning, I, I mean, it sounds dumb, but I was like, oh, like we have to, we have to deprecate this first and then we have to soft deprecate and then we have to hard deprecate <laughs> right. and then we have to remove it. Like it's the, the process just takes so long. And it, I mean, it makes sense. It's, any kind of software you would do that but um that was definitely a, a mind shift to being cognizant of that um i i can't speak to if there's been a bigger push since i've only been there for like like a little bit less than a year so i'm not sure how things were um prior to me joining um but i, I think i think all the changes that are coming are positive i think they're intended to kind of clean up and um clean up the code and and make sure that there's not we're not building layers on layers on layers to hide to hide things that we are doing our due diligence to, you know, write them, write them the correct way. That's going to be like maintainable in the future, even if that does mean making a big change that might affect um, the outside community. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not complaining. I, 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 I definitely agree. It's uh, that kind of thing is important. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, and I'm used to having to rewrite my or make I'll constantly make small changes to my extensions to deal with that kind of stuff. Um, uh, so I, I, I actually I want to ask about the API thing. I mean, you you said well, REST API for people who don't know is or RESTful is uh, basically just a, a web based API, if I understand it correctly. But although there's the concept of is the idea that there's no state, so you so, oh, but how does that work with with MediaWiki, where you have to be logged in? <clears throat> oh, or you um, have to send in a token. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud here. <laughs> no, yeah, we have. Um, we're working on a initiative, basically, to like simplify the process for gaining, like, like authenticating against um, MediaWiki, and it's like included with that is the core rest api so we, we are working on kind of like a new initiative for like an api uh, gateway um that allows client developers to easily um request a token and then um authenticate and i think i think the the 
the benefit of the REST API is kind of like a, a more familiar a more familiar um, relationship with our API. Um, that's basically like most major companies or most major pieces of software have a, have a REST API. That's very it's a very common format. So um, I think the purpose of this is just to kind of standardize that and make sure that um, we attract. It's more attractive, I think, to work with an API that's more familiar to you, um, and it's a little bit easier to work with. So yeah. Uh, so is, does that exist already? The the thing the the version that you're talking about in in some form, or is it still being developed? Uh, no, it's still being developed right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, it, but it'll it'll still be through API.php. Sorry, this is getting into the weeds here. <laughs> <laughs> um. No. Well, no. So it'll be um. It'll be re- it's like rest.php. So it's it's not. It's kind oh, of. Oh, interesting. Okay over yeah. the action eight what you would think of as the action api but instead it'll be yeah rest.php um and we have some basic endpoints up and running but they're not like live and accessible by other outside developers right now it's just kind of um we're getting the groundwork up for them like the basic ones like i talked about like editing a page you know searching for pages creating a page that kind of thing yeah okay um any idea when that will be released? Um, I have no idea, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's pretty neat. I don't think I, I... Not that I follow this stuff closely, but I don't think I'd heard of that, that there's going to be a new... A, a, you know, a new... Uh, whole new address and everything for this new API. Uh, I don't know... it. I assume this is not a secret. <laughs> no, yeah, no. This I, is not, okay, yeah. I would assume not either, yeah. um, considering everything's uh, all a public online. Um, right, but, right. Uh, yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be, it's exciting. Um, it's kind of meant to unify everything and make it a little bit cleaner for developers. Yeah, cool. Um, so, um, on the Wikimedia platform team page, it says that you're responsible for features content and data um i guess we've covered some i guess we've covered features that you're uh involved with is is there anything else that you are or potentially will be involved with that fits into those categories i i, I didn't actually know i said that uh, oh okay that's like a nice broad like <laughs> well it's basically just like yeah like whatever that's, i mean that's basically everything <laughs> yeah but, uh, yeah um yeah i mean it's it's basically um what we talked about so far um i am starting to work a little bit with um another team like the web team um just on a couple tasks i I think the purpose of it um and it might be on my misunderstanding but to kind of be familiar with other teams around the foundation um and i had this at my at nordstrom as well you would kind of move teams for a little bit and then like kind of work we work with like another team under a totally different um, product or service they're working on. Um, and it kind of just helps cross collaboration. You understand what other teams are doing at the place that you work. So um, I, over the last like day or two, actually, I just started kind of understanding what the web team is doing. Um, they have a new initiative using Vue.js as a front end framework for some front end components. Um, yeah. As doing like a little case study on how that would work with MediaWiki. So, um, yeah, I've been working on that. Um, it's pretty much oh, been cool. like a day, but <laughs> um, I'm yeah, starting okay. to understand what they're doing, and I think it's really exciting. Yeah, well, you had already worked with JavaScript before, right? Yeah, I... I, I guess you'd, did, you'd work with everything, yeah. Yeah, it, we, we were, uh, Nordstrom, we were using AngularJS. Um, oh, okay. I used React a little bit as well. I didn't have any experience with Vue, uh, but, I mean, they're all similar, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you've set up your stub or whatever it is, and your skeleton, and learned the syntax, it's you know, it's all. You yeah, other like people are like, oh, it's just, it's just you same. learn a new program, or programming language. It's just syntax. And I'm like, yeah, like yeah, kind yeah. of. Like there, I mean, there's some nuance. <laughs> well, okay. At the end of the day, like there's just, like slightly more, but you know, like back to what we're talking about with college courses. Once you have a foundation for something, it's really easy to much easier to build on it and i think that's that's the problem with some of the 
the new front end, like modern frameworks and tools is that they kind of hide a lot of it. They make it so easy, like so easy that you don't actually know what's going on. And then when there's a problem, figuring out and debugging that problem becomes a little bit more tricky. So there's, I think there's good and bad in, in using those kinds of things. Obviously it makes development much quicker, but it is nice to actually know what's going on under the hood so you can debug a little bit easier. Yeah, I've actually been uh, involved just uh, just very recently on a on a uh, project that uses Vue.js. <clears throat> it seems to me I I, I don't know. Uh, correct me if if you disagree with this. It seems to me that with Vue.js and maybe some of the others, there's a lot of features there that are really only useful if you're if you're doing something that's exactly you know the kind of thing that. That, that it's built for and and no no or very little you know custom behavior um, but then once you have to start fitting to sp- some specific specs you can't really use a lot of that stuff and it starts to look more like just a basic JavaScript anyway <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah I don't know all the stuff with you know a specific specific structure that you that you plan out for your page that's supposed to be the same for every screen or component or whatever. All right. Anyway, um, on the on the note of JavaScript, do you do you feel like um, there's some chance that that MediaWiki will in the future move to something more like a JavaScript based? Uh, single page application kind of thing that's the thing that people have been talking about forever but um uh, uh yeah i mean do, do you, i think i don't know, I don't, know. It's, uh, I, I don't imagine if i mean if that is in the future i think that would that would be pretty far in the future i think there's a, a community such a strong community around media wiki and um like they're all familiar with PHP and they're very familiar with how things are. So if that, if that ever were to happen, I would imagine that uh, it would need to be like a huge community based decision and then basically like an entire rewrite of, of media wiki altogether. Um, so it, I mean, it's obviously possible in the future. I don't see it in my, in the, in the, the immediate uh, future if I look ahead, but Hey, you never know. Yeah. Well, well, at the very least, it seems like there's there's potential for for you know some isolated features like a special page or something mm-hmm. that previously would have involved you know multiple PHP screens now just being one sort of self contained application. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, well, I guess there's some of that some of that already exists like the upload wizard and stuff. Um. Yeah. So if you don't mind me asking, how, how did you get involved in in MediaWiki and um yeah, what's your what I mean, I know this is like an interview with me, but I'm kind of curious how you got involved as well. Oh, that's interesting. No one's ever asked that before. Oh. <laughs> uh, um I mean, there's a whole long story. Basically, um I I wanted to create a, a MediaWiki based site. This was back in 2006. And that in turn led to discovering uh, the extension called Semantic Media Wiki. Mm-hmm. Uh, Semantic Media Wiki was, re- was really how I got into Media Wiki, and there's been a bunch of people who use and develop Semantic Media Wiki on this program. I've since uh, created my own alternative slash competitor to Semantic Media Wiki, which is kind of ironic, but um, called Cargo. Um, but yeah, that's how it started, and then I, I created an extension called Page Forms. Uh, which came out in 2007. So, so I I was a I started being a, a, a developer almost the same time I started being a user. Uh, and it, not counting, you know, editing Wikipedia and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's basically it. And so you started and extension I, development, and then you said you create enterprise media wiki instances, or. Yeah, I help. I do consulting now too uh, via okay. my my company WikiWorks. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, I help create uh, installations for other people and all that. Um, yeah, and I I I wouldn't have guessed back then that I would still be doing this, you know, thirteen years later. Mm-hmm. 
Maybe I should have written myself one of those future emails, you know. Hey, it's not it's not a bad place to be, honestly. Yeah. Like you're you Well, my, but mine what my, I'm saying mine would have been the reverse, you know. I, I hope you're not still doing media wiki yet. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think uh, th- I think those reminders to yourself, whatever whatever it is, are, are really helpful. You kind of get, um, I guess, jaded. Maybe isn't the best word, but you kind of lose lose sight of things sometimes. As as yeah, pass absolutely. By. Yeah, yeah, it really is easy to uh, to uh, to uh, get st- or not. Well, get stuck is a bit dramatic, but uh, to to lose sight of stuff. Some people, I've heard some people make like a, a spreadsheet of you know. Well, people do vision boards and all this stuff, but the, mm-hmm. but some people do like a spreadsheet. You know, this is this is what I want to do to accomplish in the next year or five years or whatever it is. And, yeah, I, um, I think it's helpful. It's like a my my best friend has a a whiteboard in her apartment, and for the last two years, it said move to New York, move to New York, and finally she just like called me the other day, and she's like, I got a job in New York, and I was like, see, it worked. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's. Okay, is that good? <laughs> no, it, it is good. It's good. It's a constant reminder. Um, yeah, no, I'm saying, right, right. Well, in, at this one specific point in time, moving to New York sounds like it's potentially a bad idea. But, if, but you know, the, I, I'm, I'm hoping very soon in the future that's good, that, that will, it'll, things will be back to, to uh, normal. I think Jerry Seinfeld but, just wrote an article on that in the New York Times. He's like, so you think New York is dead? question mark and he kind of goes in to refute it and be like new york will never die it's, it's it'll always have the life it always had and i don't know I mean, there's different opinions on it but i'm sure it's much well there you go yeah <clears throat> well if anybody's listening to this in the future they you know they'll be able to <laughs> to judge it anyway um uh yeah no yeah new york's great i i, I lived there for a long time uh, um uh yeah it was uh, what were we talking about oh yeah 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 uh goals um and then uh, and then how my my personal history before that and uh uh single page applications before that um yeah so so um what's uh are there any specific other things you you are thinking of getting involved in or or are planning to get involved in uh in media wiki um no i mean i've i'm still kind of i mean i'm it i mean it's been less than a year but i still have a, a ton to learn i kind of want to get to the point where i um where I, we have a so we have a team within our team and it's called clinic duty and it's basically for uh targeted for reactive work and knowledge sharing and all that stuff so it's kind of like people will come from other teams, rotate onto clinic duty, and they will kind of have a pass at helping us debug things or we'll, you know, um, work on some tickets for us or do some code review together. It's kind of just like a little a team where people can come and, and learn. And um, I would like to get to a point to where I can, I can I, I really like debugging. I think it's one of my favorite things to do in programming. I wow, like, okay. I think it's fun. You like look at a bug and you're like, what's going on? And then you just spend a while trying to get to the root of it. And it can right. be like a fun, it can be like a fun journey to actually understand what's going on. And it's really rewarding when you do get there. It's, um, so I, I really don't like band-aids over problems. And I think, so that's why I think I like debugging a lot. So I would like to get to a point where I understand or I know the software well enough where I, I feel comfortable, you know, debugging issues because there, there are so many, there's so many facets to MediaWiki and there's so many things going on and there's so many features I still don't know about or like how extensions play well together. And I think that's one of the interesting things. I mean, Every company has this, obviously, but it's just that tribal knowledge. And I think it's pretty strong at the foundation and people with MediaWiki because, like you mentioned, you've had a lot of guests that have been at the foundation for, like, what, five, ten plus years or whatever. And um, yeah, it's, or, yeah, or more. Yeah, or more, yeah. yeah. And it's, I mean, it's tribal knowledge and it, it happens everywhere. So I think there's been a big push to kind of spread that knowledge around as more as the foundation's growing and they're hiring a lot more people like myself. Uh, when I first joined there, they really wanted to make sure that I was getting the 
that knowledge transfer that would be necessary for me to kind of be able to contribute um, and get ramped up as fast as possible. So I think that's one of the, the main things that I would like to focus on is kind of basically extracting as much knowledge from people around me as possible. And um, yeah, and just kind of soaking up what everyone's working on and, and all the all the fun nuances of media wiki. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so you would be the person that people go to for, you know, intractable questions. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a lot I'm a long way from there, but <laughs> every day I'm learning something. Yeah, but, so Right, yeah, yeah. It's sort of an it's sort of inevitable if if you're there for long enough you you know um pick up the it's, what was your what was your word? It was an interesting word. Tribal Tribal knowledge. Tribal knowledge, yeah, institutional knowledge. I, yeah, yeah it's either. like right. um, there's there's a book and it's called the Phoenix Project. I don't know if you've heard of it, but uh, it's, I don't think so. It's about DevOps, but it's basically um, it's a story about a team and it, the story that it's used is used to illustrate um, a, a DevOps team at a, a random corporate company, and the story depicts all the problems that a typical team in technology has so there's one guy and he's like the guy that knows everything and it's like the bus problem right if this guy gets hit by a bus like the software is gonna just fall apart and die Uh, it was a really interesting book and i think it's really uh it gives you a lot of insight into how a well-functioning team like all the problems that are so common to look out for um i don't know how i got on this topic of that book but it's one of my favorite books as far as like uh um how to operate as a successful team Oh, that's really interesting. Um, <clears throat> I'll put a link to that. I'll, I'll I'll find it and put a link to that on the episode page. Um, it's called the Phoenix Project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, you, well, you yeah, you mentioned tribal knowledge. I, maybe that phrase came from that book. Oh so. yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, how is the bus problem for MediaWiki, by the way? Do you know? I mean, it's getting better. I think it's getting a lot better. Um, I mean, there's people that have been around for so long and they're, like I mentioned earlier, there's, they have been actively pushing to knowledge share, knowledge transfer. And that's part of what our clinic duty team is for. We pull people in. I think, um, a few weeks ago we had someone, um, come in that showed us how wiki dumps are done and basically gave members on our team a little task. Like, okay, like you, you do a dump yourself, see if you can get it to work. Cause it's, it's things like that that help you understand what other people are working on. And so if the person that handles the dumps, you know, so they leave the company or whatever, it's not right. like, it's just going to stop working. Um, and I think that's, I mean, that's, it's hard because it's hard to actively do that. It's like, here's this thing that I know of. Let me just like take time to explain it to you and like teach you. Right, and that's right. not like your inherent thing. You're like, oh, I'll just do it. It's, it's faster if I do it. Um, yeah. But it's more like an sure. investment of time at that point. But it's getting a lot better, I think. I think there's been a, a recent push, and um, I've definitely reaped some benefits from that. Yeah, uh, that's really cool. And of, of course, they're, uh, with each new developer hired, that helps to alleviate the problem, I'm guessing. But um, uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, MediaWiki definitely has come a long way from uh, when I when when yeah when I first joined, not joined, but when I first discovered it and um you know it was essentially a handful of developers doing everything um that's cool that and i i hadn't heard of that clinic thing before that's that sounds really neat yeah i think Um, i think it's a great idea and i think it's already worked um yeah it's great cool um yeah i think that's all my questions um yeah Great. <laughs> is it uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? Anything we missed? Um, no, I think I think uh, I think that's it. But I, I I would like to say I think it's interesting. Um, I mean, I've I kept to, I've come to know this more and more as as time has gone on. But there's so many people that are um, like like for example yourself, you have a podcast on MediaWiki, and that just it, it's so interesting. There's a lot of passionate people about this project. There's a lot of a lot of passion behind it and i think uh, the community is so strong and as i work here more and more i i understand that to a, a larger extent and i think it's awesome i think i think passion behind a, a product or anything is is really amazing so um 
I would just like to say thank you for having me on your show. Uh, cool. Well, th- yeah. Um, yeah, I just want, well, I want to say, well, in the case of, uh, in the case of MediaWiki, obviously the passion is sort of intertwined with the whole con- the, uh, Wikipedia concept of, you know, n- knowledge, some of all human knowledge and all that. Um, but yeah, it, ha- it has been nice, uh, you know, kidding aside about being on, being in MediaWiki, in MediaWiki for too long, it's, uh, it has been in- indeed, uh, really nice to be part of this project um yeah and and i i guess part of the podcast part of the idea behind the podcast is you know is letting people know about this community and and you know finding out my for myself and for others finding out uh all the interesting people and, and projects that, that that are going on uh so yeah so uh, which is all a long way of saying it that it was great talking to you also um and yeah, and and thanks, Nikki, for uh, being on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, and it was nice to meet you. Bye. Nice meeting you. And this has been another episode of Between the Brackets. Thanks again to my guest, Nikki Nikui, who was motivated by her past self to join the Wikimedia Foundation. Sorry about my cold, as you probably noticed. It really is just a cold, so don't worry. Thanks to all of you for listening. Stay productive. And I'll see you next time.